Legends of Sleepy Hollow is a cooperative campaign of American Gothic horror. One to four players work together as legends to find Ichabod Crane. Game chapters last between 30 and 120 minutes and are rated for people ages 13 and up. Before we venture into the woods, it should be stated that the purpose of this video is to introduce key concepts and set up the game to play the first of 10 chapters. As the players progress, they will be instructed to read various cards or passages in the storybook, or even open up one of the four mystery tuck boxes. They should only read or open them when directed to do so. Otherwise, they should keep the boxes closed and the cards reference side up, so nothing is revealed before the proper time. Players should not read ahead in the storybook. It contains secrets that only come to light when the players reach particular points in the story. Also, it is recommended that at least one player read the How to Play Guide in its entirety before playing in order to better familiarize themselves with the rules. Legends of Sleepy Hollow tells the story of four residents of Terrytown. We will refer to them hereafter as legends. Regardless of the number of people playing, all four legends are to be used in every chapter. If playing with fewer than four people, some players may control more than one legend. First, open the storybook and read the introduction on page 2. Then, read the backstories of each legend on pages 3 through 6 and select legends to play. Grab their corresponding playmats in miniatures and search the reference side of the game decks for cards 1 and 2 of each legend, as indicated on their backstory page. For example, if you were playing Emily, you would search for cards EM-1 and EM-2. One card is a secret, and the other is a starting skill. Read the secret and keep it somewhere safe, and place the starting skill card above the legend player mat in one of the three areas labeled skill card. Grab the four skill lock tokens and place one above the player mat in another one of the three skill card areas. This indicates that legends start out with only two available skill card slots. The third slot is locked for now. Assemble the miniatures so that the spinners attach to the base and go ahead and set their health to the amount indicated by health at the bottom center of the playmat. While you're there, go ahead and grab red action tokens in the amount labeled actions and place them in the recessed center preparation space on your legend's mat. This is how many actions your legend takes before they get to refresh their action pool. Familiarize yourself with your legend's abilities. It's okay if they don't make sense yet. Note if you have any defensive or damage bonuses, and look at your starting technique and the basic actions in the arced area at the top. Now, read the prologue from Chapter 1 on page 7. Once you've finished, create the map for Chapter 1 by selecting the four schoolhouse tiles and arranging them as indicated in the storybook on page 8. Grab the spawn tokens and place spawn point 1 onto the map where indicated. At the beginning of the game, only spawn point 1 is active, while the other spawn points remain locked. Those tokens will be placed later when the game instructs you to unlock those spawn points. Grab the 12 pumpkin interact tokens and place them on the map at each point indicated by the small stacks of paper on the ground. These are searchable points of interest that your legend can access using their environment action. Construct one gobkin and two shrik roots and place them at the indicated locations on the map the Gobkin at Location 2, and the Shrik Roots at Locations 3 and 5. Grab the minion cards for Gobkins and Shrik Roots. For Chapter 1, the monsters are Level 1. Hide the top unused half of the card under the board so that only the stats you'll be using this chapter are revealed. Then, set the monster's starting health to what's indicated for Level 1. Grab the Fear Tokens and place them within easy reach, and lay open the storybook to page 9. Place the Action Indicator token on the first spot of the Adversary Phase section at the bottom of the page. This dictates what the monsters will do during their turn. Also, place the Spawn Marker on the first spot of the Spawn List to indicate which type of monsters will spawn during the round. All four legends start the game in the space shared with Spawn Point 1, the entrance of the schoolhouse. Put them there now. Finally, grab the 12 game cards for Chapter 1 labeled 1 colon 1 through 1 colon 12, shuffle them and place them nearby to create the search deck. Now you're all set up.
The goal of the first chapter is to explore the schoolhouse, find all five keys, and then follow their instructions to discover how to win the chapter. This information and more is found in the chapter information panel on page 9 in the storybook. Finding the keys involves moving to spaces with pumpkin interact tokens and then using the environment action to search for clues. All the while, strange monsters are about, so beware. The game takes place over successive rounds until the legends have either won or lost that chapter. Each round consists of a legends phase, where each legend takes a turn, and an adversary phase, where each adversary takes a turn. During the legends phase, each legend takes a turn. Pick a legend to go first for the round. You can switch up the turn order each round, so feel free to change it up as you go. At the beginning of their turn, they may refresh their action pool if no tokens remain in their preparation space. This is where switching the turn order may be helpful. One legend can help another refresh by going first, letting them use one of their powerful special skills. They may also swap any relics or items in their possession, making them active. Then, they move and take an action, which can be done in either order. In Chapter 1, the map spaces vary in size and shape and are differentiated by parallel wooden boards. Each legend's movement is indicated at the bottom center of their playmat, labeled Move. Moving into a space with an adversary incurs no penalty. Moving out of a space with a foe, however, incurs an attack of opportunity from the adversary. Any and all foes in that location roll their attack dice, and then the group of foes make a single attack of damage equal to the number of dice that did not roll a blank against the legend. When a legend takes an action, they grab a token from their preparation area, placing it into one of the action spots in the arced area on the top of their board, onto a skill card without any tokens already on it, or onto an item card that the legend has obtained. Actions allow the legends to do a number of useful things. Attack their foes, restore themselves and others, interact with the environment, and even change how other actions behave. Note that at any time, if a legend runs out of tokens in their preparation space, they immediately refresh, regaining all of the tokens on their board and skill cards so that they can immediately complete their turn. When taking an attack action, the legend will first calculate range and determine if their target is within line of sight. Unless otherwise indicated, Range is specified in the bottom right-hand side of the Legend's playmat, under the weapon statistics. This is also where you'll find any damage bonuses that apply to attacks. Range is calculated orthogonally, starting with range 0, where the Legend currently stands, and moving outward without counting a diagonal space. In the case of Jeremiah here, his range is 0. He'll need to move closer to swipe at those monsters with his shovel. In addition to being within range, legends need to see what they're attacking. In Chapter 1, the schoolhouse is filled with objects that block movement as well as line of sight. Check page 8 in the How to Play guide to see which areas are blocked in Chapter 1, and use the storybook for subsequent chapters. Assuming a legend can make an attack, they pick up the appropriate number of dice and roll. Then they count up the number of pumpkins and add any bonuses to damage and apply the amount to the target as damage. This monster loses that amount of health. Once a foe loses all of its health, it is removed from the game. When taking a restore action, which happens to be Elijah's specialty, the legend being restored will regain health or remove fear in any combination. Fear tokens get added to a legend's preparation space when particularly harrowing things happen to them including when they take significant damage. Fear tokens must be used like regular action tokens before the legend may refresh, but some actions will not activate with fear tokens. Check the circular token spots on the action cards to determine how many and what type of tokens must be used. For example, an action with three activation spots requires all three tokens to be used at once for it to activate. An action with only the yellow, jagged border around the activation spot must be activated using fear. For restore actions performed at range, calculating range and line of sight is done in the same way as for attack actions. When taking an environment action, a legend simply does whatever the chapter information panel defines as an environment action. 
In the case of chapter one, the legends draw a random card from the search deck. Whenever you gain a card from the chapter deck, read it and if it instructs you to do something, do what it says. Sometimes while searching, a legend will pick up an item or relic card. Relics give legends ongoing bonuses, while items give new actions that a legend can perform and are discarded after use, returning any tokens on them to the preparation space. Items don't carry over to the next chapter, so don't be shy about using them. Other actions are available to certain legends, like Matthias's Change Tactics, which alternates their attack priority between high and low, and subsequently affects how the action Hipshot functions. Read their descriptions in consultation with the How to Play Guide to understand how they work. Once the legend has completed their action and moved, if at all, they pass their turn to another legend who hasn't gone yet that round. The legend phase ends when all four have completed their turns. The foes of Sleepy Hollow are relentless and unpredictable. Using the spawn rules, spawn list, and adversary phase indicator in the chapter information panel on page 9 of the storybook, the players can run the adversaries, moving, making attacks, spawning, and any other special directive prescribed by the game. In chapter 1, the first round, round A, lists move and then attack. So, first, each adversary makes its move in order, starting with bosses, then gobkins, shrikroots, and pumplings. Movement is listed along with the other stats on minion cards and other cards that the players obtain later on in the game. Foes move toward the closest legend. There is no limit to how many legends and adversaries can occupy the same space. After movement, round A lists attack. Every foe within range of a legend attacks one time. Foes attack in the same order as movement and are subject to the same restrictions on range and line of sight as the legends are. Foes always attack the closest legend. If legends occupy the same space or there is some other tie, foes attack the legend higher in the attack priority list on the chapter information panel. Whenever a foe has multiple equally correct choices to make, the legends choose whichever option they prefer to take. Foes deal damage just like legends do, using attack dice and direct damage amounts. However, legends may negate some of this damage if they have defensive bonuses granted by clothes, relics, or other items and abilities. After calculating damage, it is applied to the targeted legend, who loses that amount of health. Each time a legend takes damage, one fear token is added to the preparation space on their legend playmat. If they take three or more damage, an additional fear token is added this way. A little fear isn't always a bad thing. Fear can be used to activate the legend's basic actions and any action that has the yellow jagged border around the activation spot. Importantly, if at any time a legend has 10 or more fear tokens on their legend mat, they flee and the legends lose the current chapter. Similarly, if a legend is reduced to zero health, they are incapacitated and the legends lose the chapter that they are playing. When this happens, don't lose heart. Reset the chapter and try again. Legends aren't always made overnight. When the objective of the chapter becomes clear and the legends accomplish their goal, the game will direct the players to read the epilogue for that chapter. For chapter one, that's on page 10 in the storybook. This ends the chapter. The players will then gain rewards that they can use to customize their legend's playstyle. Sometimes the players will be forced to choose between options, so think carefully. These decisions will shape their legends in unpredictable ways that might open up new opportunities and allow them to explore new strategies as they journey further into Sleepy Hollow. Legends of Sleepy Hollow consists of 10 chapters filled with menacing adversaries, thorny puzzles, and strange twists of fate. If you make it to the end of this story, there is also an expansion, The Ghost of Terrytown, which further explores the aftermath of the frightening events. We wish you luck as you trepidatiously venture into the woods. If you make it out, I'm sure you'll have a legendary tale to tell.